thing to climb up the cedar Across the clover, all fours and all free To lie on your back and see the sky backwards It's got to be something more than the heart Has any right to see Beyond a lie is the best part of living The best part of being alive is to be Awake and aware of what's over there Beyond the next beach and past the last highway You thought you might never see isn't it something, the dandelion dozing, reposing in fields that are open and free? Better than best, we two together, it has to be something more than our hearts have any right to see. Yes, isn't it something just to be you and me? Do you can John feel with his coat so gay? Do you can John feel at the break of day? Do you can John feel when he's far, far away with his hounds and his hairs in the morning? <laughs> No knocking about the messenger rooms downstairs. Is that understood? Oh. 
Go on up. My ladyship will want to take the measure. Where are my scissors, Mrs. Crumpferl? They came apart, my lady. I'm taking them to be mended. Oh, very well. I'm your great aunt Sophie. You don't look at all like my nephew. Do you remember your father? Not very well. He was a sorrow. Splendidly hairy. Oh, <laughs> peerless horseman. I myself taught him to hunt. I don't believe the residents of Boston go in much for hunting. No. No, I thought not. Well, what do they do? Do? With their horses. Their horses. Where do you Bostonians ride your horses? Ride? Are your wits perhaps inadequate? I asked, where are you accustomed to ride your horse? I don't ride. You don't ride? Oh, you mean since you were six? No, I'm afraid of horses. Afraid of horses, my great nephew. Have you perhaps forgotten that you're English? I should have expected it. Bringing the child up in the city, neglecting his character, feeding him unhealthy slop. No wonder he's spiritless. Mrs. Crumpferl, I want the child to have proper English teas and good English breakfasts. Porridge with thick cream and eggs and sausage and kippers. And for lunch, plenty of blood red meat. <laughs> we'll soon have you up in the friskiest horse in the country. <laughs> and Mrs. Crumpferl, pour me a glass of Madeira, please. Madeira is not medicinal. <laughs> Mrs. Cranfield claims to be teetotal. <laughs> Come and sit on the bed, boy. <laughs> You're looking for a cup of tea. You best fill up the wood box. Men are knocking things around and leaving a mess for whatever woman's handy. If you do your work. Trapped there only last week. Nasty things in the cupboards everywhere. And why didn't you clean up the moth holes that she spilled? I never. Who's the other half of the scissors? Oh, it's the limit. I never seen no scissors, and I never make no mess with no more. Oh no, you never. I tell you what else you never, you never empty the ash pan. So long. I could have swore I heard that pod. Pod, what's that all over your... That's ash. You had to come down from under the uh, stove. Tut, tut, don't scold, woman. It was just a little shortcut like. A shortcut? Under the stove was shortcut ashes and hot coals? Pod, they was in the kitchen. You might have been seen. Why do you take such... Oh, Pod. Aren't you something? Now, don't <laughs> worry, old girl. I wasn't seen. I've never been seen. I don't intend to be seen. This place is mine. No cats, no dogs, and what humans there is, uh, duck soup, you might say. None of the hazards of me wild youth. Well, where's Arietti? I've got something for her. Mm. Well, she always is these days. Arietti! Arietti!
<laughs> and what have you been doing? I've been writing in my diary, Mama. Oh, I hope you'll read it to me sometime. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Papa, it's wonderful down by the grating. The sun, the birds, everything. There was a field mouse. Which hand? Oh, um, this one. She would have brought you? Oh, that stamp album upstairs is such a one. All the colors. I really don't like to borrow from it. Oh, Papa, I give anything to see it. I mean, all of it. Harry, Eddie, your father can't very well lug down a great thing like that. Wherever do you get your ideas? I didn't mean that. Papa, I wish, well, what I wish is that I could come borrowing with you. Oh, you wicked heathen girl, how can you speak so? <gasps> so it's come to this. I could borrow. I know I could. I'm tired of being cooped up down here. Cooped up? Who's cooping you? That's a fine way to talk. With a nice home like you've got, and a grating into the bargain. Oh, Papa. You know, Harry, run along, hang up your stamp on the wall, and come back quick for tea. Okay. And four miles in 20 minutes wasn't bad going for this particular pack. Before the hounds had checked the side beach, half the field had fallen out already. <laughs> you see, this rascally old dog fox, as I told you, well, I can see you have no interest whatsoever in the hunting field. Take the tray to the nursery, Mrs. Pamphurl. And place the decanter within reach, if you please. Run along with Mrs. Pamphurl, boy. Have your tea in the horseless security of the nursery. <laughs> what am I to do every day? Eat what Mrs. Pamphurl gives you. You have plenty of fresh air and whatever exercise you're up to. And in the evenings, <laughs> come in and kiss me goodnight. I'm sure you'll be fit in no time. Perfectly sound English stock turned all yellowy and runty from city living. Up, 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 up. Oh, well. Age and pain and disappointment. <laughs> Never took comfort from pure spring water. <laughs> Near your bedtime, Miss. China ones left. I told you and I told you, Harry, I did not to use them. No, no, it's only a cup. No need to make such a terrible fuss. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, it's all right, Harry, dear. I should have kept them out of harm's way. I did so dote on those cups. Wait a minute. Seems to me that I've seen a cup like that up on her floor. Yes, in the old nursery. Oh, I'll go up and get one right now. You miss. You get yourself to bed where you belong. No. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Take good care of yourself, Bart. I tell you what, I'll try to get a little of her perfume on a piece of cloth like for you. Hmm? It's terrible stairs, Paul. You're not exactly a boy. Might I suggest, madam, that when I return with the perfume, you and I'll have further discussions about my age. Reach me a pill. Catch! <laughs> There's no communication between men and women. No between generations. When you're as old as me, Pod, it'll come to you. Will you get old, I wonder? <laughs> you poor little delusion. <laughs> I, uh, I've told Mrs. Cranfield about you. Oh, that was very naughty of you, Lady Sophie. I said, Mrs. Cranfield, it only stands for reason, I said. 
factories go on making safety pins year after year, hundreds and thousands of them, and people go on buying them. And yet, there never is a safety pin when you want one, or a pencil or a needle. Now, where else could they go to? Something takes them, I said. Or somewhat. Lady Sophie. <laughs> I thought for a moment the fool woman was going to offer me a lecture on the evils of drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pod, Pod. I long for a bit of human companionship. Pod, you're all I've got. Oh, and, and you mean a lot to me, Lady Sophie. Uh, being able to come here and, and, and talk with you about the world. Uh, the truth is, a man's family is a precious thing. But the world, Lady Sophie, the world. Oh, poop, 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 the world. Yeah, and I'm still young. You know, borrowing has always meant uh, adventure to me, danger, excitement, uh, pitting me which against terrible odds. Oh, I was brought up on it. But uh, this house, Lady Sophie, you'll forgive me. The way it is now, my 12-year-old daughter could uh, do the job. <laughs> oh. Well, I suppose I should be seeing about Amelie's cup. Something. Oh, he's seen me at this. 
He's seen you go under the clock. He knows where we live. No. But he will. He will. He's seen me and... No, he'll search and he'll dig and he'll try. Oh, how many... Our days are numbered. Numbered. I tell you, when I looked up, and, and I, I saw that light thing and his, his great meaty fist. Oh, I thought he was going to mash me flat out. Monster. Oh, Pod. No, no. No, 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 no. We've got to talk to Ariadne tonight. When I think of the things she don't know. There's no use frightening her. No, she's just a child. So is her cousin Tina. Remember. I'll wake her up. You talk to her right now. Uh, Arietti, uh, you're gonna have to grow up fast. You're gonna have to, to face things. Uh, for instance, what do you know about boys? Boys? Listen, Alma. Yes, you're gonna have to face the facts. There's a human boy in this house living on the top floor. And human boys, they're the worst thing there is. Oh, what do they do? What do they do? Oh, no. Well, they... Oh, they... Uh... Harrietty, human beings, uh, regular grown-up human beings, mm -hmm. they're good and they're bad. They're honest and they're art. No good ever come from no uh, human beings. please. Like I said, they're a mixed bag, the grown-ups. But human boys... They hunt. That's what human boys do. They destroy everything that walks or runs or flies. But, Mama, they're just children. Children human beings. I don't think human beings, even children, can be so very awful. Let me tell you, Mama. Homily, please, Ariadne, who around here is likely to have more first-hand information I'd like to know? What they are is clever. Human boys are clever. No borrower can go on living in a place when he's been seen by a human boy. And that's what happened tonight. You mean this boy saw you? Tonight? Nothing will ever be the same again. What can we do? Oh, Papa, we should leave? We should leave here? Why, this is our chance. Now we have to do something. Go somewhere. Ariadne, you don't know what you're talking about. To go and live in the fields. Sounds wonderful. Like animals. I won't do it. And neither will no daughter of mine. Nobody said you had to go live in the fields. There's other places, the overmantel. Oh, oh, can't you just see us moving in on the overmantels? If they're still alive. Or don't you remember there's a boy living in a farmer's place, too? That don't mean he's seen them. Homily, we've got to explore every possibility. That farmer's place isn't half the distance it is to Uncle Andreary's and Aunt Loopy's. And if the overmantels are still there, I think I should go... Ask for overmantel charity, the stuck-up things. You know they always thought your sister Loopy married beneath us. Look, we've got to have some plan. Don't you see that woman? We've got to start somewhere. Now, at least I can go and see if they're still there. I won't let you do it. I won't let you make that terrible trip alone. And I'm not forcing myself uninvited on the overmantel. Let's just hold off for a couple of days. I'll tell you what. We'll set up a listening post. Stand guard around the clock. Somebody there at all times. It's just possible that that boy might not be here to stay. That he might have to leave before he's had time to dig us out. That's it, Bart. Yeah. I know that's how it'll turn out. Well, don't count to it, Come on, now. We'll get things ready. Necessary. Oh, it's only what you can carry. We gotta be ready and able to run. Come help me. Hey, you are bad I'm bringing up the candles. Well, just what I wonder. I can use every one of them. Papa, I'm not afraid, Papa. Not of anything. Well, I could even find the overmantles for you. Well, I'm not. I'm not afraid of things, cats or dogs, or anything. Gosh, no, just. We'll talk about it later. to make it more comfortable out by the listening post. All right. You see, she just doesn't comprehend the danger. I know, I know. Ariadne, uh, you heard your mother and me talk about Tina? Yes. Look, your Aunt Lupe Henry had six children. Tina was next to the oldest. She was about your age. Another child. My age? You mean when they had to immigrate? No, no. Uh, when they lived in the barn here. Wait here a minute. Come on, tell me about 
Tina. Tina, get out. Out? How? What do you mean? You'll be never kept up with those children proper. That's the truth of it. Just let them run wild. Tina got outside. They waited a week, they waited a month, and they hoped for a year. But no one ever saw Tina no more. No trace of her ever again. Why not? What happened to her? Well, you see, outside, there are animals. Not just dogs and cats, but wild, terrible things like ferrets and weasels. You mean Tina got eaten? I don't believe it. You better believe it, because that's what happened to your cousin Tina. And don't you ever, ever forget it. Yes, Mama. I want to be the first to stand guard. I'm not sleepy. Can I, can I no, go? No, 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 not tonight. Now, off to bed with you. Oh, I think we ought to let her. She's to take a turn, same as us. Oh. She might as well start tonight. Why hurry it, woman? It's about time she learned about them. All right, I guess you've got to start sometime. Come on. Tuck your feet under the back of the There you are. Mm. Keep a good watch. Good night. We won't be beaten, and we won't be eaten. <laughs> yesterday when you first come in the door no messing about down here have you lost something what are you looking for something what kind of something kind of a a little man <gasps> oh. so she started on a little man has she probably offered you some fine old Madeira I'm being raised in the city you probably took it now outside where boys belong I want to look for I got a lot of borrowing to do. May I come borrowing, Papa? Yes. Oh. Um. But remember, borrowing is a skilled job and hard. And of all the families that have lived in this house, 
There's only us left. You know why? Because your father is the best borrower that's been in these parts since, well, before your granddad died. That's right. But I never heard of no girl going borrowing before. Why couldn't she, Pop? Isn't she just like her father? This is it, our Yeti. This is our clock. Oh, it's beautiful. The clock our family's named after. Over 75 years, they say, it's been standing here on this spot. Oh, look, they were in luck. Both doors are open. I can't make up what it is. It's pretty, Papa. Can I pull a vat? I mean, by myself? Oh, why not? Come on, I'll show you. Here. Give me the hook. All right, now get back there. Very good. You're better than your papa. Oh, I wish your mama could see you. Look. Oh, that's beautiful. Come on. Now put the ball in your borrowing bag. Now you're a real borrower. Be the wind. They're all gone. Mr. and Mrs. Cranford are the boy. She can't get out of bed. Must be the wind. I'll hit you. Why? In case you run towards me quickly through the sand. In case you scramble at me with your nasty little hands. Why should I run towards you? Things do. You were supposed to go away this morning. Well, I didn't. I'm to stay a few more days. I'm not well enough yet. Oh. Did you come out of the house? Where in the house? Where did Crampfell go in the cart? Mrs. Crampfell said it was her day off. And she meant to have it. In spite of everything, she meant me. Yes. Now tell me where you come from, or I'll hit you. All right. Hit me. Go on, hit me. Stay where you are. Supposing you saw a little man about as tall as a pencil coming out of your dollhouse, carrying a doll's teacup. Would you say it was a fairy? 
No, I'd say it was my father. How old are you? 13 October. How old are you? Eight. Thought so. Can you read? Of course. Can't you? Could you read out loud? Of course. Could you, could you read out loud to me? Of course. Can you fly? No. Can you? Of course not. I'm not a fairy. Well, nor am I. Nor is anyone. I don't believe in them. You don't believe in them? No. Do you? No. Of course not. Do you know my great aunt Sophie? No, but my father does. Does he like her? I don't know. She thinks my father comes out of a decanter. Does he? Don't be silly. Do you like her, your aunt? Great aunt. Yes, but she doesn't like me. I'm afraid of horses. Are there many people like you? No, none. We're all different. I mean, as small as you. And don't be silly. Sure you don't think there are many people in the world your size. There are more mine than yours. Honestly, you really think, I mean, what sort of world would it be? With great chairs? Fancy if you had to make chairs that size for everyone. And the stuff for their clothes? Miles and miles of it. And the food they eat? That's why my father says it's a good thing they're dying out. Who's dying out? Human beings. Just a few. My father says that's all we need to keep us. Otherwise, the whole thing might get... Well, get out of hand, he says. What do you mean, to keep us? Human beings are for borrowers, like butter and is for I don't bread. believe it, and I don't believe that's what we're for at all, and I don't believe we're dying out. Just use your common sense. You're the only real human being I ever saw close to, except for the ones in this house. But I know there's lots and lots of borrowers. The Hendrieries, the overmantles, the drain pipes, the heart cords, the clock, that's us. Who are they? My Uncle Hendriery has a house in the country and five children. But where are the others? Oh, they're somewhere around. Well, I've only seen two borrowers, but I've seen hundreds and thousands... I don't believe you. ...of human beings. And what's more, I don't believe that there are any more borrowers anywhere in the world. I bet you're the last. We're not. I bet they're dead. And what's more, no one will ever believe I've seen even you, and you'll be the last because you're the youngest. One day, you'll be the only borrower left in the world. What's the matter? They're not dead. The Hendrarys live in a gopher hole two fields away. We don't see them because it's much too far. There's weasels and hawks and owls and foxes. Which field? I don't know exactly. It's over by the Perkins Green. I'm going home. Don't go. Please. You promise you read to me. Let me go get the book. I'm not going to read to you now. Please listen. Just one chapter. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go to that field and find Uncle Henry. And everybody. And if they're alive, I'll tell you. What about that? You could write them a letter and I'd put it down the hole. Would you? Would you really do that? Yes, I would. Really and truly, I would. Now can I go get the book? When can I give you the letter? Anytime. I could come to your house. No, no, I I'll put it somewhere. I'll stick it in the grating. Which one? The one by the front door? No, the one by the back, near the kitchen. All right, I'll get the book. Wait, wait a minute. You mustn't let my father see you. Where is he? He's working in the hall or the kitchen. I don't know. I'll go on the side door. The grating by the kitchen? Now I can guess where you live. Arietti! Where are you? I'm here. Come back. Come back quickly. I told you never to leave the house. Drop that. You can't go lugging great flowers about. Now, come on. Help me with your bag. running around the field. Young Tom thinks the boy's got himself a ferret. That Tom's got ferrets on the brain. Where would the boy get a ferret? Well, I don't know, but there he was all day. Running around that field by Perkins Green, shouting down the rabbit hole. But he was calling to something by, by name like uh, Henry. Henry. Hmm. Where's Papa? Following. He won't be back for a good while yet. He likes it up there. 
gossiping with her, poking about in a dressing table. What are you up to? Just a line to the stair room, Mama. deserted by a delusion. I said I would have come if I could have come. Why can't you admit you've been frightened? I can take one look at you and see you've been frightened. Frightened? Me? Frightened because you're so small. Or small because you're so frightened. <laughs> That's more like it. Would I be here if I were frightened? Oh, you're cocky enough with me. You think I'm harmless. A boozy, bedridden old woman. How dare you patronize me, you, you wretched little mannequin, you taking liberties, puffing yourself up, keeping me waiting. Lady Sophie... I have my own life to lead. You think all I've got to do is to, to sit around your boudoir chattering? I have business of my own to pursue. What business? You've got no business of your own. You've got nothing of your own. You've no business, you've no affairs, you've no possessions. Well, your very existence, by your own admittance, is to go creeping about my house, piercing out of my stores. Uh, Lady Sophie. Pilfering my belongings. Your house indeed. Us clocks have had this place for over 75 years. Well, you think you own the world. Well, you've nothing, nothing that doesn't belong to me. You're a cocky, conceited, ungrateful little... Quite, you wouldn't exist at all if I didn't virtually inundate myself in Madeira. You think I don't know why you haven't been here? You haven't been here because that Mrs. Crump, Pearl woman, has been watering my wine. <laughs> Take care of my property. If Mrs. Crapfell ever drinks enough to see you, <laughs> I can handle Mrs. Crapfell. <laughs> oh, Pod, proud, that's the way I love you. Acting proud and cocky, and all the time inside you, you're trembling with fright. <laughs> oh, Pod, Pod, don't ever leave me, you're all I've got. It's me, Arietti. Did you take the letter? Why did you come creeping, creeping into my room? I didn't come creeping, creeping. Came down the hall. And Aunt Sophia saying terrible things to my father. When I brought the book, he's gone. My father fetched me. Did you take the letter? Yes. I had to go back twice. I shoved it down the golden hall. Here it is. He's written on it. Oh, please show me. Then they are alive. Did you see him? No. But when I went back, the letter was down the hole, just where I put it. But they've written on it. Look. I can't see from here. It's very faint. What's he written it with, I wonder? Y O double E tells Y O U R. Your. Yes, your. Tell your mother, come soon. So tell her. Wait, wait, don't go. I've got something for you. Come home. There's a blue one too, but it's a bit... Where are you? Where have you gone? Oh, come on out. What's going on in there? Who are you talking to? No one. Be quiet then and go to sleep. <laughs> what a night. Oh. Oh, don't let yourself be seen by that boy. Ariadne, what ever made you do such a thing? I was trying to save the race. The expressions that she uses. What race? Our race, the borrowers. Hush. She said we were dying out, and that we were the last three left, and that one day, that one day, I'd be alone in this house, alone in this world. So I wrote Uncle Hendry a letter. The boy took it for me. He what? Uncle Hendry answers. Here, Mama, Aunt Lupi says, come soon. The boy brought it back to me. He found Hendry? Oh. Then he'll find us. What is it? It's a screwdriver. You, you sneak, you're a terrible boy, a terrible human boy. 
Is that your mother? Certainly. Put that light out at once. At once! Glass brought something for you. I brought it especially. I... It's very kind. But we don't need anything. Thank you. Thank you very much. We don't need anything at all. Nothing except our roof. Show us what you've got. It's this. Oh. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And now will you be good enough to put our roof back? Wait a minute. There's something else. Try it. Just about fit you, Claude, that was. Oh, Pa, it's perfection. I'll get the rest. Thank you, but please, no more in the parlor. It's getting all cluttered. Everything looks so lovely, Papa, doesn't it? Then just put the roof back on, will you? There's a bad draft. Shall I nail you down? Of course, nail us down, you great clot. I mean, I've got even more things. Tell him to nail us down, but lightly. Just a tap or two here and there. She wants you to nail us down lightly, just a tap or two here and there. really and truly saw, and it was a boy. Oh, Bob, those beautiful things. Think of what he brought us in just one visit. Ooh, he's ugly. I knew they were ugly, but not that ugly. Uh, she's, uh, she's not afraid of him, is she? Not one bit. A human boy. Ariad is no more afraid of him than you are of her upstairs. I shouldn't wonder. It's in the blood. I got my human being, Ariad, he's got hers. But, uh, you know, I never heard of no borrower would, would ever do a thing. Why, why shouldn't we? We'll just sit tight and make good use of him. I'll show her. Who? Her. Aunt Sophie. That's who. And remorseful Eric cannot help being amazed how in his heart and his selfishness he left that fair child to go so far astray. That's his trade to such boys as were his companions in the lowest school. Eric, did you know? You like this story? Yes. I've got a friend called Eric. Is your mother really pleased with all the new things I brought last night? Very pleased, yes. Good. Go on now. Can you turn over, please? No, the page I mean. Dada was flogged last night for what she did. Eric's eyes filled with tears. The burning he scammed What are we going to do with all this stuff? It's gotten beyond all reason. I know how you feel, Paul. But he's been so kind. You just can't tell him no. Where are you going? Upstairs to her room for a place to sit down. Your father was a soldier, wasn't he? Who did he kill? Oh, I don't accept they told him. Whoever needed killing at the time, I guess. He killed other human beings? You're making it up. No, I'm not. No borrower could ever kill another one, not for any reason. Why not? Human beings do, all the time. And that proves what I said. It's the human beings who will die out. There's too many human beings to die out. I'm glad I'm a borrower. I'd rather be middle in everything than kill other people. I'm leaving tomorrow. Leaving? You never said you were leaving. Don't worry. We've got all day today. We can easily finish the book. It isn't that. It isn't a book. Oh, how can you be so silly? You're like all human beings. You're, you're treacherous and dangerous. Oh, do you think I'm dangerous? How? Because you, you make everything change, and then you just go away and don't care. You're glad to be going. I wish you'd never come. I should call the police now. I know I should. Wait a few days. Maybe the things will turn up. The boy will be gone tomorrow, and who will get the blame then? I'd like to know who is responsible for this house. Me! That's who. And what good will it do? You can't prove nothing.
for one last look, so you can remember life. I'm to leave by 9.30. Will you be under the clock? Put a bit of rag around that hammer. Keep the noise down. And, uh, nail us down tight this time. Seeing this once and for all. Thanks again. Good night. Bye. See you tomorrow. a little playhouse here. No, no, I've seen them running. I've seen them. Seen? Seen what? What? They was not my stressed up. My stressed up? Horrible. Vermin. That's what they was. Vermin. Oh, whatever they was, there's no sign of them now. Oh, they've run away. That's why under the floor was up inside the walls. The place is alive with them. I tell you. Well, just look at all this stuff. Playing dolls he was. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Yes, that little flute was missing from the drawing room. Yes, that silver thimble he was complaining about not long ago. The snuff box. Oh. Yeah, two of them. Oh, the little devil. Lady Sophie's handkerchief, monogram in all. Safety pins. No wonder I could never find any secret pins when I was looking for them. My big mattress needle. I looked everywhere for that. I knew I had one. Yeah, look at this, will you? Look at that. It's the gold pocket watch. It's going. And what's more, it's right. Mr. Grumple, that watch has been missing 70 years. Now, where do you suppose he found that? Now, what's he done with the big things from the drawing room, I wonder? Where's he put those? Not enough room down there for all that. Yeah, let's finish looking in the morning. No. Now, come back. The whole house, top to bottom. There's no need for that. Call in Tom Goodenough and his ferret. Set the ferret loose under the floor. I want this place cleaned out. But try the ferret first. You can always try the fumigators if that don't work. No need to upset a ladyship with the fumigators unless it's necessary. Well, get Tom right now, then. Right it's now. In the middle of the night, woman. Come on, morning's good enough. We'll get ourselves a feisty little dog. We'll borrow that one of Turner's. Set him loose topside. He can track the ferret. We can see where he stops. Now, hold on, will you, till morning? Go, pocket watch. We've got to get the constable now. And I want you to spend the night right here. I want that old watch. Nothing's going to come out of the hole now. Oh, my God. Sit and watch it, seeing as you've got yourself into such a state. If you mind about my state, just you keep your eye on the old. And get the ferret early. I want this done before that boy gets away. All right, don't worry about it. Go on. Go on back to sleep. Please, not very likely. Not this night. Get out. 
take you to the attic. We can't stay there. I heard her. If the ferret don't get us, she's gonna fumigate. Top to bottom. After tomorrow morning, there's no place will be safe. Not indoors, not in this house. We've got to emigrate. <laughs> oh, no, Harriet, not you two. Don't you start taking on. I'm not taking on. I'm so happy, happy to be going outdoors. It's all I ever wanted. We can go to Aunt Lizzie's. In the gopher's home? Well, where else? How about the stables? No, oh, we've got to eat, don't we? There's nothing there for us. Will you go tonight? We can't cross the fields in the dark. Not with Arietti and Homily. I can take you up to my room for the night. Take us? How? In a box or something. In his pocket. What does it matter? All right? Yeah, I suppose so. Hello. I was just... I just knew where I lost my slingshot. Don't you think I heard you whispering to something in there? Pick it up. What's this? I'm putting it in front of the hole. We can do so, please. Oh, anyway, heaven only knows what kind of nastiness. I'll get with you in the morning. I want to talk to my aunt. You won't want to talk to her when I'm finished talking to Rabbit. You wretched little pickpocket, putting suspicions on honest, hardworking people, or you'll be talking to is the police. Oh, I can't seem to stop shivering. I know, Mama. Well, why don't Pod come back? Hurry, Eddie. Do you think he's gone back in those rooms where Crampo could see him? Well, he might. And mm. Crampo is really asleep. Now or never, Mama. Oh. We'll need some clothes. We can't arrive at Ten Jerry's all poor and destitute. Oh, poor and what? Destitute. You wouldn't like it. Not in front of Aunt Loopy. Oh. Wish that boy would hurry on back and unlock the hole. Mm. Oh, Pod, thank goodness. She locked the boy up, what? Right? Oh, yes. She's back in the kitchen now with Crampto. You know that big marble slab I told you about that they make pastry? She had Crampto lay it over the hole. We're trapped. What about the grating? Couldn't we, couldn't we get through it somehow? Oh, yes. Then it'd be straight outdoors. But how? That grating's made of iron. That. It's a nail file? Hey, that's an idea. Steel against iron. Yeah, it would take a little while, but we've got some time. We've got six hours. Hey, you're pretty artful when the going gets tough. We're working shifts. We've got to late in the morning. Oh, it's the big boy. He must be the one with the fence. He's going around the corner. It's all right. You go back to sleep. The constable gets here. I thought you said he'd be here by 8.30. It's past that now. Well, well Mrs. Cranford will start without him, Miss Jester. She won't leave here with that boy until he's got the goods on him. Yeah. Take the baggage on and put it down in the cart. Time's wasting. You ought to say goodbye to your aunt. And I may tell you she's in a very nasty temper. Oh, 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 oh. The master criminal. Good morning. <laughs> they say crime doesn't pay. Have you been interviewed yet by the police? Oh, they're late. <laughs> Perhaps you better tell me what bits and pieces of that just downstairs you find so appealing. I'd gladly give it to you, you know. I didn't steal the things. You see, Mrs. Cramphill, you might have asked him. Mrs. Cramphill thought you were dickering with a receiver of stolen property. <laughs> you were only playing, weren't you, boys? I just borrowed the things. I borrowed them for the little house. Did you give the policeman all the details, Mrs. Cramphill? The midnight raid in the doll's house, the squeaking and running of terrible little things. He'll probably have to call out the reserves. <laughs> oh, <laughs> too bad we didn't hit it off, boys. I'm too old. I say all the wrong things. But I believe always have. I expect you were bored and lonely here. A horse would have made all the difference. Crime is a natural consequence of not riding horses. <laughs> Remember what I told you, Mrs. Cramphill. Take my advice <laughs> and keep the bottle corked. <laughs> 
some of those ornaments, according to Mrs. Cranfield here. How about that gold watch? It's supposed to have been missing for years. I found it. It was already down the hole when I found the hole. Just taken away down there, was it? After all these years? Yes. No. I mean, I said it. <laughs> One for you, and... One for me. Call yourself a policeman. We've been sitting around here wasting precious time. Wait up, Ferris. Come on, Miss Hill. Why? Yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Grandpa, get it, Grandpa. Yeah, I guess we'll just that, see now what you got on that hole. Here, get that quick. You put it down there. Yeah. Move the door, stop. The hole's behind the door. Come on, come on. Dad, it's big enough if he squeezes. Gee. Send it down there. Oh, Dad, if you go on the wall, you go on the wall. You can't lock that hole. You can't lock that hole. You can't lock that hole. I put clothes there, our clothes, our scent. Sort of false trail like, leading to the kitchen. You give us more time. It's no use trying to file anymore. File is worn down. Give me a hand, try to break this. Everybody, here we go. No. No, we can't do it. Where are you going? Let's try to block up that passage more. Come on. He found himself something down there. Yeah. Is it down there? No, he won't stop to smell something. No, I can hear it. There's nothing else down there. But he's on something. I can move along. I should have caught. I should have caught. I never thought they wouldn't. <laughs> Too bad you can't be at the finish. 
and a little package. 